You will own nothing and be happy. You've probably heard this before, and I'm here to tell you today what the next evolution of that is, the steps that will be involved, and how soon this is coming, and in fact, has already begun. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. In today's video, we are going to talk about how inflation is your fault. You are the reason why inflation is so high in the first place. We've got to talk about something initially that inflation is going to be measured in a lot of different ways. That's an absolute fact. But when we talk about inflation for you and I right now, we're talking about the prices we pay at the store, the prices we pay at the pump, how much we've got to pay for all our services, all goods in general. Not the core PCE rate that the uh, you know the Federal Reserve loves to look at, or the CPI that the government wants to touch on every month. It's not a realistic number. You are the reason. That's right. According to the Atlantic, inflation is your fault. If people are so mad about high prices, why do they keep buying so many expensive things? You see. All you had to do was stop buying the stuff that you need and prices will go down. That's right. When you go to the store and you buy your pasta and rice and any other things that you're purchasing, that's why it's going up. You see, if people would just stop buying, well, then inventories would climb and then they would be forced to bring the prices down. There's just one problem, though, the basic essentials are too expensive. That is the messed up logic that these propaganda institutions spit out there for you. And most people watch the alternative news and really it's the same old garbage. And they will be served that garbage. The vast majority of people who consider their information to be alternative are getting that garbage. Sad. The vast majority of people in general are a lost cause. But even those who are saying, no, 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 I'm tired of the news. I'm not watching that. They're still watching filth. This is Bloomberg. Inflation stings and most of you are earning for people earning less than 300K. All right. Why not try this? Why not try taking the bus? Right. Uh, don't buy in bulk. All right. Uh, try lentils instead of meat, and nobody said this would be fun. So I'm not honestly sure if this is real, but this kind of seems like something that would slap you in the face when you read it. And it's not too far from what I've seen elsewhere, though. Taking the bus. They say you should be taking public transit. This is the solution to your problem. You, whatever, whatever it is, whatever it is, this could be just some you know fake meme or whatever. They do certain things, they they tell people, no, this is what you gotta do to, to solve it, but never once do they point the finger like I'm doing right now at you. Jerome Powell, the FOMC, and all the other central bankers around the world, and more importantly, the institution of central banks that are the cause of the devaluation of the currency, which leads to all these problems. Simple matter of fact. Would taking the bus be cheaper than driving your own car? Yes. I know people that say it all the time. I've read your comments before that say, I will just eat less. That's the solution. It's healthier. Look, if you want to eat less, eat less. But you shouldn't be forced to eat less because food is too expensive. You shouldn't be forced to not have to put the heater on and instead wear more blankets. These are basic essentials. This is not like saying, you know, I really want that Ferrari, but I can't afford it. Life's so tough. We're talking about food, shelter, and energy basics. It should not be unaffordable to the masses to afford, you know, normal stuff. Now, do some people make bad decisions with their money? Some people make bad decisions with their life? Yeah, but it's not everybody. Stuff, stuff is just 
It's too expensive. To save money, maybe you should skip breakfast. This one is legit. I know that. I read it from two different places, pulling this up out of the Wall Street Journal. You, know. you see, you are the problem. Several breakfast staples saw sharp price increases due to the perfect storm of bad weather and disease outbreaks and continued uh, effects from Russia's invasion of Ukraine. So they're saying this, they look at the prices, they went up, I get it. So you're better off just having a cup of coffee. Yeah, sure. Like I said, if you want to skip, I don't eat breakfast as soon as I get up. I know other people don't do that. They call it intermittent fasting or whatever. I've been doing that long before I knew what a name of it was. Why? Just because I wanted to. But not because I said, well, you know, the longer I push this off, the less money I'm going to be spending. That's a terrible thing. That's unfortunate. And it's not because of greedy farmers. It's not because of the companies and their greedflation, which is real. It's because of the currency being devalued. How does it get devalued? Well, the simple explanation of this is that they go out there and they pump up the cash. Well, how do they pump the cash? It's usually done through this quantitative easing strategy that they've been doing many times before over the last, you know, well over a decade now. They pump the cash in and it goes in to buy treasuries. It goes to buy mortgage-backed securities and it's highly unproductive money. It's not as if we're giving you a paycheck. That would be somewhat productive. But this unproductive money dilutes the total value of the rest of it. I would argue that it's, you know, some would say, um, you know, this is not inflationary because it's just buying in the treasure, treasuries and it's just being cycled around inside their garbage. It, look, use an extreme example. If they had quadrillions, quadrillions printed every single day, would it be inflationary? They would say no, but I would say absolutely yes. You got to always think of the most extreme example you can and then work from that. And the, and the fact is, yes, it is. But at the very least, I'm not making excuses for it, but at the very least, if you're going to send out a stimulus check to people, at least people are getting it and not being bought up for the mortgage-backed securities, which benefits primary dealers, which are like the JP Morgans and all that. But that's a whole different story. I could rant on about that all day long. Downsizing to a tiny home reduces your ecological footprint by 45%. That's right. If you want to help the environment, you should buy a tiny home according to the World Economic Forum. That connects in with this and in the next one I'll show you. As Americans struggle, financially, climate agenda sets to spark new food prices, according to analysts, one by one, okay, squeezing you. And then that's this as well, van life and van living. Terms that become more popular around the country recently. People are packing up their lives, moving into the mobile units, and exploring the states. This is not just in the United States, but it is uh, quite popular, more popular over the years. There's all kinds of videos on all the social media platforms talking about how people have been enjoying their time in their vans. Now, I don't necessarily, you know, what if you want to do that, if you want to get in your van, you want to drive around and say, hey, this is my time, I'm young, uh, I'm doing this now, it's a bit of travel, it's a bit of experience, you know, great. But if you're living in your vehicle because you literally can't afford any form of property, well, then that's a different story. Just like the food thing, different story. And unfortunately for many, they're talking about the financial challenges that they have experienced. I've watched these videos before. Honestly, they're, they're, in a lot of cases, their vans look fantastic. I mean, they do a great job with it. But we shouldn't be in a circumstance in which we say, look, I just can't afford the thing, so I'm going to be living in my vehicle. That's a, that's a heartbreak. All right? And then I wanted to leave off on this little... Uh, little fun note due to the fact that this is a uh, quite a serious video tooth fairy inflation is real it's leaving 100 bills and louis vuitton bracelets 
That's right. Parents are going bigger with the mini milestones in their children's lives, but that lead to the comparisons and awkward conversations. Now, I know times have changed and the currency, as we've said here, has been devalued quite a bit, but I don't remember getting $100, $100 and I don't have a Louis Vuitton bag, but I think I used to get a quarter or maybe a dollar. I mean, I'm not so sure, but it was definitely a coin. It wasn't a paper bill. So, uh, yeah, has the currency devalued that far? Or maybe people are just spoiling their kids in this way or something. I don't really know. I'll leave that up to you. What do you think is going on here? Is this part of the devaluation of the currency? Are we being desensitized? And because of social media and other media that things have to go bigger, 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 all this craziness, and we can't just enjoy the simple things in life. I don't know. You tell me. If you want to get the information directly from me, where we look at these things and how to actually get out of these problems that people have, I am doing that every single week, two times per week, for two hours in each of those sessions. Finance Live and Business Live, there's a link in the description right at the top where you can click on that. I get inquiries about this, multiple every single week. Check that link out, themoneygps.com slash live. And as always, I do appreciate your thumbs up. And don't forget to come back tomorrow. You probably will not see these in your feed. So you got to come and check out the Money GPS directly and I'll bring you the information that you need to see. Take care.